Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, She Is TV. I have the awesome opportunity of being here virtually with Dr. Lulu. Um, she has been really busy, so I'm so excited that we both got this time to just pause a bit. And I wanted to sit down and chat with her because she has so many wonderful things going on and she offers a wonderful service. And I just wanted to talk with her because I thought it would be super beneficial to share her with everybody. I don't want her to be a, a, the best kept secret in San Antonio. Um, she Well, that's kind of hard when you've been on you know, CBS morning show with Gail King. <laughs> so okay, I think the cat is kind of out the bag now, Dr. Lulu. So what I, what I want to do is stop here. I want to pause here and I want you to introduce yourself to everyone because you'll do a much better job than I would. Oh, well, I guess the first question is how much time do you have, right? <laughs> I'm going to try to squeeze in 52, 52 whole years of queen yeah. into into two minutes. I think the summary of it is I'm literally the girl next door to my neighbors. And I think that's most important. I'm the mom to my kids. I'm the daughter to my parents and a sister to my siblings. Professionally, though, I'm a speaker, author, I don't know, four-time best-selling author and hey. <laughs> a two-time TEDx speaker and yes, girl. United Nations international, local, national speaker. But really, I'm, I'm just a voice for the voiceless. And as a pediatrician or retired pediatrician, former lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Air Force, former commander in the U.S. Air Force, yes. I think I've been speaking a lot. But I think if I've, if I've ever needed to use my voice is now speaking for the child who really is begging for me to get to their parents today yeah. because the child finds themselves existing in a world where no one understands it. No one wants to understand it. People want to just push them away. Yes. Really, I had a parent actually describe her child as disabled. She said that's the only way she can picture her child because it's the most people that are disabled, people don't really want to mess with them. I mean, you see them, you kind of feel sorry for them. Yeah. But you're just like, wind up your window and drive off. So the child is, is in the LGBTQ plus space. Sadly, or unfortunately, today's world is trying to annihilate them and extinguish them, if that's such a word. Yeah. And so I'm here to speak for that child or that young adult, like my own child, or that adult like myself, right? Because I'm also in the community. People just, yeah. there's no look. Yeah. There's no look. It's just, you're just human. And so what I want to do is what I want people to celebrate the humanness. Absolutely. Of all. And, so and I'm glad you, I'm glad you used that word because that's specifically why I wanted to occupy this space with you. Um, because these are people, not just letters, um, not just bumper stickers and festivals and parades, but these are people. This is someone's son or daughter, someone's aunt, someone's sister. So I wanted to, um, our purpose, our time here today was to, uh, to highlight humans, not letters, um, not preferences, um, and because- Not choices. Yeah, or choices, absolutely, or choices. Um, so I applaud you for the work that you're doing. Um, I applaud you for creating a space for parents, because I think a lot of times we look at the individuals, but we don't realize that there's a host of people attached to these people. And so once the decision is made or the coming out or, you know, however you would term it, we're, we're, we still have to deal with people and their positions and their families and you specifically dealing with parents and both of us are parents so we know what that is like to to have you know in any capacity don't mess with my child um <laughs> don't mess with my child and especially for black moms <laughs> yeah i will literally go handle this for me yes. i will that's when i will tell you to handle this for me yeah and i think, and I think the irony of it all is even for the black mother, black father, my ideal avatar, we're just working with my coach on it this morning. Mm -hmm. We named her Karina mm -hmm. and I named her Karina on purpose. She's, she's black, 
all white, mm -hmm. not quite Karen. <laughs> not on the Karen spectrum. Exactly, but she's Karen enough because she's white. Mm -hmm. So Karen is a very common white American woman name. Yeah. Karina makes it maybe Hispanic. I like that, Karina. And, but also Karen enough, and I made her up and she's about 43 years old. She actually likes a little bit of country and a little bit of rock and roll. So, I mean, I was just trying to create her. She likes to shop at Target. Um, she has, she likes to subscribe to Oprah Magazine because she's in touch with that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But she's just really ultimately a mother whose child just came out. And then the next question is, now what? Yes. She probably has friends who are gay. And she's like most people who say, well, I have black friends. Yeah. So maybe I'm not racist. Yeah. You might be, Karen. Might be. <laughs> okay. so, and, and then again, um, so my I have friends who are gay. But when it comes to my child, I don't want any of that. God, you just, yeah. <laughs> I mean, and that's why we're here today. That's why we're here today to deal with that. Um, can If I could back up a bit, I, I just want to put a pin in that to talk about when I first met you. Um, I was telling before we started recording, I met you and I believe it was at a uh, um, Women's Day or something that the city was having, um, International Women's Day. I think it's been, I don't remember that. It's been that long ago. Um, no, it was, I remember the event, but I don't remember meeting you. Yeah, I well, you're kind of you're kind of hard to forget. <laughs> you're you're you were that you were very very passionate about the suicide project and what you were doing and about saving these children. So that's what I remember about you. Started following you on social media and so kind of never let you go. But I want to talk to you about that portion that I believe um, is fueling uh, your uh, the other side of your work. So let's talk about that space for a minute and black teens and suicide, um, because I, I don't think that that's talked about enough. It's still a thing. And I say this all the time, even when racism isn't trending, it's still happening. Um, that's part. So let's talk about that. And then kind of like we'll segue back into how you help parents transition and navigate that space when they have uh, a gay son or daughter. So I think I'll, I'll, I'll let you have the gay son or daughter because in the African-American community, everyone is, is gay. And gotcha. that's, what we, that's what we think. But I think in the spirit of edumacation, like Thank my you. sister, the ex, she would and that's why we're here. <laughs> in the spirit of edumacation, while gay is loosely the word used mm -hmm. to represent all of them, the better word will be queer. Okay. The not, the not so politically incorrect word is queer. It's no longer politically incorrect. And the best word is LGBTQ+. If you really want to go all the way there, LGBTQIAP. Mm -hmm. Before you put your morals and your values before God, whose only commandment, the main commandment, the numero uno commandment was love, thy neighbor as thyself and only love God more, right? right. Or maybe the same. Never say thy gay neighbor, thy black neighbor, the neighbor that is your cousin, the neighbor that looks just like you, that goes to your church. No, there was no qualification. So if we really want to go back to the basics, I want us to see how man as an entity is the person who injects division, injects difference, injects all of these things. Why do I say that? In a kindergarten class, all the kids love on themselves. By the time they get to middle school, they don't do that anymore. By the time they become adults and go to work, they'll rather eat alone than to talk to the new guy or the new girl. And so we are the one as we get, as we grow, that we now add division to it. And so let's bring that back to your original question. The truth is that African-American children aged five through 12 are twice as likely as their white counterparts to die by suicide. That study was done in 2015 
and done again in 2016, 2018, and both times were published in the Washington Post. So you could go look it up, like this is not even a Dr. Lulu type of thing. Why is it that African-American children aged five through 12 are twice as likely to die by suicide? The easy explanation is trauma. And that's what my TEDx talk is about, mm -hmm. childhood trauma. But if you dig deeper, what's behind the trauma is ostracization, is bullying, and it's almighty racism. And it's also religion. I don't know anything more divisive as religion. And that's why for some people, spirituality is deeper. I went to Bali for my 50th birthday two years ago, and I came face to face with a religion that honors spirituality and just kindness, first to self and then to others. Mm -hmm. And kindness is missing in today's Christianity. It's missing in today's Orthodox religion. True kindness in the true sense of the way Jesus practiced kindness. Jesus said, suffer them to me. I'm coming here for those who accept that they are sick. Not those who already think that they're already well. And when you pray, go into your room, get on your knees, and pray so that your Father in heaven can hear you. You don't scream and shout like the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They already have gotten their reward. I used to teach Bible study. <laughs> and I do know that today's Christian, I am not about that. that I, that's not the way Jesus prayed. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those. When you judge my child for being gay, have you forgiven? Are you even seeing them as human and needing to even like share the same air? I'm seeing this as a Nigerian who comes from a country where every other street has a church, but they are the most homophobic country. How do you reconcile those two things? So yes, African-American children aged five through 12 are twice as likely to jump to their deaths. Most people don't even, most black people don't even know that statistic. They don't. And that's why several weeks ago, there was a little boy called Tyler, whose video went viral on social media. His family members, his parents and uncles and aunties. I didn't watch it because that's too much trauma for me. But cursing him out, calling him names, all kinds of slurs, beating him up, calling him gay, and carved out the words gay on his haircut. Oh, wow. How humiliating of this black on black violence. The boy is nine. So today the family have been arrested, they've been put in jail, but how many more Tylers are out there? And, being... that's, and, and that's the space I wanted us to occupy today again. Uh, navigating back to that, that uh, we see them as people. As you and I do, Michelle. Yeah, yeah, but that's the space I wanted to provide here. Um, and again, going back to what it is that you do, um, helping or facilitating uh, parents deal with this. Uh, I mean, this is a reality that's in that's in our culture, in our community, and not just our culture and our community. Um, it's everywhere. It's global, but specifically because they're just this has been a taboo topic. We just don't talk about it. Um, we we just don't. I, I remember instances um, very clearly, and I know some of my family members will see this, where I have a lesbian cousin. And her and her partner would come to events and they would just kind of sit to the side and nobody would talk to them. I mean, it wasn't, there was no, no written or unwritten rules. It just, I think it was because of our lack of, I, I don't know, our, our ignorance. I won't say lack of our ignorance. Um, at, that, one point, though, at one point, at one point, it's no longer acceptable to say it's lack of our ignorance. Mm -hmm. That's another way of saying the word excuses. And I say this to say it clearly, I don't know your family. But it no, this matter. was early, not, uh, I'm saying this that's was- Not early. anymore, yes, not anymore. But I don't know your, but I, that's why I said, I don't know your family, but it's not about your family. It's yeah. about human, it's about me seeing 
someone and another person sitting alone and not me, not going up to say hello, regardless of what else. When Jesus lived, what would Jesus have done? The truth is Jesus is the one that went to the woman at the well that everyone has acted like you just described. Oh, she's a prostitute. Oh, she's going to hell. Jesus said, Nicodemus, come down from the tree. I know you're a tax collector. Come down, come to me. Jesus, the same one that we quote, brought, lived that way. If, if the Bible is true, then let's call it thing a thing. I'm yet to hear that Jesus ostracized anyone. And I don't think he would have in... Uh, would have. That's what I'm saying. That's what I mean by that. That's why again, I said, even if you didn't put your family, it doesn't matter because I want people to not say, well, it's her family. No, it's about you. And that's why I use myself as an example. The fact that we are okay with that. If we should, you know, universal kindness should be the only religion. Universal kindness. And that comes from a deep place within you, forgiving yourself first, seeing that you have a log in your eye first, so you can maybe see my little speck. I, I, I'm not make, yeah, go ahead. I'm not making it about you. Go, go, ahead. go ahead. I was going to say, I don't have any Bible verses on my notes. This is Dr. Lulu. See, <laughs> certain things. And I'm just saying, because who you are is how you is how you operate in every arena. So how you do one thing is how totally, you do everything. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We're totally good. We're, we're, to, we're totally good. I appreciate you interjecting that because God is love. That's what the Bible says. God is love. God is a spirit. He's neither male nor female. God, God is love. And if we are going to uh, learn how to um, love and communicate and have community with, and I'm, I'm talking about our family members first, because we have to do it at, in our home first. Inside, yes, yes. First. And um, so those are, again, that's the space I wanted to occupy. So I want to get to our questions. And, and, I, and if you had another thought or wanted to complete your thought, I didn't want to cut you off. And I think the only, the, only, the only last thought I was going to mention in that, just in that realm is just, it's important that people see us as people first. If you remove, if you remove the sexuality part. Absolutely. It's a regular human being. And most people, like I say all the time, my neighbors, it would be a shame on them if they see me as the gay neighbor or the LGBTQ neighbor, because I don't see them as the heterosexual neighbor. I see them as my neighbor. Yeah. I don't see myself as the gay doctor or the gay coach. No, I see myself as a person. And so we are not the ones, just like, you know, people say that, thank God, Black America is not asking for revenge is only asking for equality mm -hmm. that's so deep because black america for so long has been treated like less than the stepchild right and so when a black person knowing that turns around and treats their own person this way no matter what the reason is you can now see why the problem why the children have a high rate of suicide. You can now see why the dirt and the funk and the stench is so deep within. It's gonna take cleansing for people to start seeing because suicide is, is a, when a child dies by suicide is a failure of the community. I totally because agree. If it takes a village to raise a child, my original quote is it also takes a village to save a child. And so we cannot go about saying, well, that's not my child. Like, that's not none of my business. Because every time a child dies by suicide, it means that that child could not find one single adult that they could trust. That's what the studies have shown. It's, uh, it's, it's heart-wrenching to even imagine a five-year-old having the wherewithal to say, I'm going to end my life. What, what at, in the space of five years, Six-year-old, seven-year-old, ten. No, I'm glad you said five because what? because the youngest child that died by suicide in the whole world, as recorded, was five. So I'm so happy you said five. Maybe you knew that, maybe you didn't, but but five-year-old is the youngest. 
I just they, I can't they, understand. Like you said, there was a Chinese girl in, the, in America. It was a six-year-old. That child, Two, one African American and one white, could Go not ahead. connect with one other person that could save them. I mean, what could be seem so final and so so desperate and just. I mean, as a as a fifty two year old woman, um, trying to I know right, trying to grasp at you know what what would bring me to the decision to the conclusion that this you know that I need to end it here. Um, so the I, my heart just breaks for the loneliness, the loneliness that person must feel for the void that they must feel, and so again, I I I wanted to create the space so we could talk about that. But aside from that, for a person feeling like because of what I chose, my choices, my decisions, or how I feel I was born, to say, I want to end my life because no one understands that I can't find love, and, and specifically from my parents, that that's part. heart-wrenching. And so, that part. And, and so to go oh, back a little bit, even before you go any further, yes. I also want people to know that it's really, truly not a choice. I say that because, and I know you didn't, you, you said that, but then you went around and I said, I was born that way. Okay, so let's go there a little bit because enough people think it's a choice. And so when I go there, I say, if, if truly it's a choice, who do you know in their right mind that would choose that? That would choose their parents disowning them that will choose the community spitting on them, that will choose possible death because African-American transgender women are killed like literally, or people, at least women of color, but more so African-American. Literally every other day, there's one that's been dead. And that's why there's a whole thing about, they, they, they have a, um, a hashtag to something live past 35 or something because they don't live that, past that whole, that whole, uh violence with the trans community that's that's a whole nother discussion and that needs but that's to be I say about so it, does, it does need yeah. to be had but i yeah. want to leave space for the people that are watching that believe that it's a choice they have they have that that is their choice to believe that yes okay i just yeah, I know that. and the only choice yeah and, and and it's good you mentioned that because it while it's their choice to believe that they they trust they transpose that on the person who is just living their life. And one of the kids on my, on my Facebook group there, the child said, had a t-shirt that said, the only choice I made was to come out to you because many, many children know and they don't tell anyone for years because of what we're discussing right now. Mm -hmm. That's why it's not a choice, but go ahead, go ahead. So let's get to the, um, the portion with the parents. Uh, because you have a son or daughter that's born and they're born a son or daughter. And so there's traditional gender roles and things that happen or, you know, uh, things that we've seen in our family and our community and our experiences on TV, media, whatever. Um, you know, girl grows up, she meets a guy, she gets married. They have grandkids. This is my daughter, this is my son-in-law. But what happens when that entire dynamic <laughs> It's changed. So now my daughter is not marrying a man. She's marrying a woman. And so I specifically, and, not, and, and again, I wanted to talk about the people in this, not about the preference, not about, you know, the, the failed expectation of parents. Um, because that's, I think that's the thing. I think we go from, and I'm speaking with zero experience. So <laughs> completely free to correct me in this. So you're going from you know, a child that, you know, you expect your daughter to get married. You want that for her. You want that for the family. You want that for the pictures. You want that for Instagram. You know, we want, we want certain things for all the wrong and selfish reasons. And so now, you know, you have a whole, an entire different dynamic. So you go from a, a child coming out to all, you're all the way to all the things that this is disallowed, all the things that you won't see, all the things that we call normal um or you know things that I can compare like you said my neighbors well my neighbor's daughter or my neighbor's son so how do you navigate the field expectations that parents feel when they come to you how do you help them to uh deal with that and I won't say cope uh to deal with it 
I think I mean, you can also use cope. I mean, I, I really do hold space for the person that I am. Mm -hmm. I am a mother of a non-binary child and I had to work through it myself. So I'm not just, I don't know, she's just saying it. No, I'm like literally living it. It's like daily thing is present, continuous. I have to be intentional about using the right pronouns. I have to check myself. Sometimes I still mispronounce them and I have to remember and, and correct it because the, your brain, as you know, as a coach, if the more you offer your brain, the, the better your brain is going to do. And I, and I like talking about the brain because we're only using 10% of our brains. Yeah. And, and using 10% means I don't know 90% of the things that are out there. I don't. And one of them could be that my child truly feels like a girl. Like literally is one of the 90% of things that I don't know. And I want parents to just sit with that for a minute sit with the fact that you, we don't know everything. We, we don't, the, the earth, we've only explored what 5% of the earth. There's so much that we don't know. And just because something is popular doesn't make it right. And I say that because slavery was popular. <laughs> Dr. Lulu, you're talking <laughs> stuff today. Slavery was popular. Racism is still popular. Because something is popular doesn't make you right. Re leave the religion out because we already, we already killed that. Mm -hmm. Because we already said that the original intention of the Ten Commandments were written in the Ten Commandments. The original intention. There's no mistake. The first and most important commandment was given to us as the first and most important commandment. And so coming down to the parent, Honestly, the first thing is trying to, we trying to make it about us a lot. We try to make it about us. And so my job usually is to help them see that it's no longer about us. And you said two things that are important, actually three things. The first thing you said was failed expectations. Mm -hmm. That's my own expectation of my child. Right. And right. one of the questions I ask my parents is, how successful were your own parents, Michelle, in getting you to become who they wanted you to become? <laughs> Forget about marriage and all that. That's frou-frou. That's cherry on top. Right. Go to med school, whatever. Become a lawyer. I don't care. So when parents are dreaming, what I tend to say is it's okay to dream for your child, but I need you to include your child in your dream. Because truly, if you don't include me in your dreams, I'm dreaming a different dream. <laughs> and so you are my parents and you're dreaming all these things for me. I have my own dream. And unless our dreams meet, I'm going to live my dream. And so what I ask the parents to do is to step back a bit from making it about you. And so my book is called, It's Not About You, The A Through Z of Raising Your LGBTQ Plus Child. It's not about you. If you make it about you, then you say, what will my friends say? What will my coworkers say? What will the church say? That's you, 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 you. Yeah. Now, I want you to consider a child who comes out at 16 that they're gay. Let's go with gay since that's the word of the day. <laughs> nice rhyme. However, they've known, they have known that they liked girls at the age of six. Seven, eight, nine. It peaks at nine to eleven, and it says everything in life is a bell-shaped curve. Studies have shown mm -hmm. as early as five, girls, kids have crushes in kindergarten. This is a known thing. It's not Dr. Lulu. Peaks about nine to eleven and ends about thirteen. They know who they are attracted to, sexually, emotionally, physically, which is romantically, like um, Madea says, romantical. That's yeah. what sexuality is. LGB is sexuality. TQIAP is gender, okay? So leave that alone for a bit and then come back to the fact that the child has known, right? Since possibly five, six, and they come out at 16. I want you to understand how long potentially the child has known. Mm -hmm. Because they told you on their 17th birthday, doesn't mean they knew at 17. And so that's good. You, that's good information. I mean, that's also why I do what I do because I yeah. also have to go and do my research. 
So everything I talk about is in my PDF, the one you were going to try to download and, and mention the ages there. Can I put a pin in that before I forget this thought? Sure. So it's sure. like um, that, 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 well, if for lack of a better term, that incubation period where the child knows or the child feels like that. Um, and so when, like you said, when they make the announcement, parents immediately start wondering, why didn't I see this? Why didn't, you know, so we start trying to figure I, out, I, I. How, yeah, the lost time. Oh my God. How, why didn't, how didn't I, I could have done something, you know, it's just, again, it's, it's that cycle. And again, I want it to be, for this to be a, a, a an environment where a parent who is going to see this title on the magazine, I want them to click on this video and, and seek you out because they don't have to be alone. Just like their child, they mm -hmm. don't have to be alone. <laughs> and that's why one of the things feel, I say Feel is, all the feels. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I say, actually, it's funny you say that my A, B, C, D, E plus mm -hmm. the F, the letter F is feel all the feels. Oh. <laughs> it's okay for you to not know. It's okay for you to cry. The parents in my Facebook group say mourn. It's okay for you to mourn. Is the it okay? Is it okay to not be okay with it? All of it is okay. Here's my only thing. Don't take too long though, <laughs> because your child has known for you again. Wow. And not only that, not only that, even if your child hasn't known, even if your child is not sure, one of the first questions is, are you sure? I, I say that because I go back a little bit to a boy who is five, who is playing in the sandbox with a little girl. And one of the moms is like, whoa, is that his girlfriend at five? Okay. And we laugh and giggle at, oh no, they're just playmates. Because we know deep inside that you can have crushes at that age. And therefore, if a mother came and saw two boys playing and said, oh, is that their boyfriend? The person, oh my God, don't say that. I want you to see that visceral reaction and ask yourself, where does that come from? Why is it okay to have this dichotomy? It's okay to be okay with a nine-year-old having a crush on another nine-year-old, as long as they're not the same gender. While I'm not, I don't care about that. What I'm saying is ultimately, let us look at the fact that we have a visceral reaction because we always look at everything LGBT as dirty, as nasty, as about sex. But the truth is, just like a heterosexual marriage, you're not thinking about sex all the time. <laughs> it's a relationship. But for some reason, when it's not heterosexual, we are thinking sex. So now whose mind is in the gutter? Dr. Lulu would tell you like it is. That's a good. I'm very not here. There are, eight billion, there, there are eight billion people on earth. All of them, and all of them are not my tribe. <laughs> Those that are my tribe, just like Jesus, those that are his know him. So I'm not here necessarily to recruit followers or so. I'm here to speak a fact because I want you to ask yourself, to sit with that feeling yeah. and go deep and ask yourself the why. Go to the fifth why, they say, right? Dig deeper and then deeper. The truth is studies have shown that most intense homophobes are closeted gay. That's all I can say. <laughs> and you said that so lovely. Well, because I'm also a speaker. <laughs> you know how you play with your voice and intuition and pause. So it lamps. Absolutely. I'm a speaker. I was born speaking, but my mother said, I've never stopped talking since I was a baby. <laughs> but yeah, I get paid thousands of dollars. So thank God I didn't listen to them telling me to shut up and all that. The point I'm trying to make is this is again, this is not, this is not, it's for you to just say. Hmm. I wonder if she's right. That's, that's my intent. Why? Because there's a little child. I see I'm a pediatrician and I'm a child advocate, but my platform is youth suicide prevention. So yeah. I want to always see where my eyes are. There's a little child out there who is begging for me to reach to their parents today. Mm -hmm. Today, not tomorrow. Because no one wants to be ostracized, bullied, looked down on, treated like scum, avoided. Nobody, humans by nature are about connections. 
And so when your child is feeling that, you can now see why suicide is an option. That's really, that's such, I mean, the passion and the, uh, not only the, the information, but the passion in which you deliver it um, is so necessary, I believe, because this is such a serious subject. Um, and I, I just keep saying this, I, I can't imagine the loneliness that a child would feel uh, that they thought that at such a young age that this is, this is my only way out. This is the only way out. And, and it's not because they want it. And you, you yeah. alluded to something earlier on, you know, on my Facebook, in my TED talk, I mentioned that betrayal, I mentioned the word betrayal by parents. Mm -hmm. It's what the child is seeing. Oh my God, you're my mother. You're supposed to love me. You're supposed to be the one that accepts me no matter what. Why would you do this to me? Mm -hmm. Think about it with any other thing where a child is saying to themselves that, even my mother told me to get out of the house. Even my father, who is a pastor or whatever, is disowning me. Yet on Sunday, they're standing on the pulpit and preaching about love. I want you to just see that black child. It's not, it's, I, don't know any, I don't know this person. Yeah. I need to know them. Because my own child was that child. My own child, while I did not disown my child, mm -hmm. I pushed back. I said, wait. What is non-binary? What the, is it? And they were like, mom, it's not about you. It landed for even, me. Even quickly. the doctor. Even, well, even the doctor. Thank you. Last week, I gave a talk to National Medical Association, NMA, to a bunch of physicians. All of them wrote a comment. Thank you so much for breaking it down. Thank you so much for helping me see. Thank you. Da, da, da. Because they don't, it's, it, this is not a doctor. You don't teach this in med school. Absolutely. Parenting, there's no school, as you said at the very beginning. For me, I'm acting purely as a parent first, mm -hmm. then as a coach. Oh, by the way, I walked my talk. I'm not just telling you because I was like, yeah, sure. No, I was like, heck is non banner? What is it? And for a minute, I was, does it mean, are you transgender? I, mean, I went there. And they were like, no, mom, it's different. I said, okay, phew. Why did I say phew? Right. I too don't. So I want the parent to see that I'm not here telling you that because it's easy. No, but I'm here telling you that because it's your child. That's why I'm here. Not because it's easy. Nothing easy is good, as you know, right? Mm -hmm. Nothing good comes easy, rather, is what they say. So it's not because it's easy. It is because it's your child. And sometimes you have to defy the odds when your child is concerned. Mary, the mother of Jesus, made them travel back for three days. They go find her boy. Baby. Yes. The good book says, when the shepherd is guarding the sheep and one sheep is lost. Yes. The good book said that. Yes. I've never known where it's been okay for us to turn our backs on our kids. And Jesus had an attitude with his mother. He was like, woman, don't you know I'll be about my father's business? Did you think to check in my father's house? Mm -hmm. Jesus was just as human. He was just as man as yeah. us. But we forget that and we never think about Jesus the man. We always think about Jesus the God. Jesus the man is the one who said, mom, it's not my time yet. What? Yeah want to make any miracle i don't want to do this i'm at a wedding back off okay put any words you like but his mother said y'all just do whatever he says and then he was like ah, all right bring the water reluctantly yes this miracle okay you know, so go ahead I, I just want to say you know in this moment i am i am praying in this moment that there's a mother that watches this video and she's able to reconnect with her son or her daughter. And she's able to, to express the love that they have been longing for. That there's a father that makes peace um, because we're not, we're not doing the work of ministry if we're not loving first. 
We're not following Jesus if we are not loving first. Um, and so the, again, this is why this was so important for me to sit down and talk with you when I, when I realized, you know, this much of what it was that you brought to the table. And I, I just have a couple more questions. This has been so thought provoking, number one, so challenging um, in so many ways. And that's how you grow. It's called growing pains for a reason. It's not easy to grow. When you plant a seed in the garden, I don't care how much you try, the, the seed grows not because of you. The seed grows because you nurture. You put it in the sun, you water it, you put the soil, but it's not by your might that the seed is growing. And so when God gives you a child as a gift, it's not by your might to say what that child is going to become. And people talk about getting married to a man. Ma'am, your child is 10. They're not worried about marriage, but you might not have a child to get married. You might not have a child. You might not have a child tomorrow to attend the wedding because there is suicide, 60%. Six zero percent suicide amongst transgender and non-binary. Sixty, six zero. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of people. You will not have a a, child, a wedding to plan. You will not have any aisle to walk down. While you're worried about your future dreams for your child, your child just wants to have dinner. They just want to have dinner, and they tell you, "Say, mom, don't make a big deal of it." You should not be coming out of a closet. What is the closet? The closet. They just want you to hug them and make it okay and be there for them if somebody tries to bully them. That's what your child wants. They're not planning a wedding. You are planning a wedding. You're making it about you. Your child might not be here to walk down the aisle. And guess what? Divorce is higher amongst heterosexual marriages. Domestic violence is higher amongst heterosexual marriages. 60 to 80% of LGBTQ people are bisexual, which means many of them are living in a marriage with another gender. 60 to 80% are bisexual, which means many of them are living in a marriage with another gender. While you are celebrating that your daughter is married to a man, your daughter might be LGBT and just living with a man because uh, I can't deal with anything else. So my mom would leave me the heck alone, which is what I did. I married a man so that my parents would have an aisle to walk down. I was living a lie. It's not a joke for me. It's life and death for me, for that child who may never see tomorrow. Life is cut short because someone feels they want to kill all the black trans. They kill them. Their lives are cut short. They just want to go to work, pay their bills, live a normal life, buy a car, go on vacation. It's not about marriage for them. Yeah. It's about just finding a tribe that accepts them. While you're planning your marriage, I want you to see the difference in the thought process. The mom I signed up on Thursday, she said that. She said, I just, I just worried about, da, 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 da. I said, what does your child want? She said, well, he just wants me to not make a big deal out of it. So I said, okay. Well, what's, what's the first thing you're going to do about not making it? You know what she said? She said, well, I guess I should, first, I should first start by not nagging at him so much. I said, and that's why coaching works, is what you can do that I'll hold space for you and hold you accountable. So what does not nagging, what does it look like? And she said, well, and then she said what she was gonna do. But in the meantime, the child already ran away. So don't wait until your child runs away to come to Dr. Lula, I'm not a magician. You've been known that your child was like this. Most parents have an inclination. Most parents who are in tune with their child have an inclination. They will tell you, well, I kind of suspected. And then all of a sudden the child comes out, oh my God. So which is true? Did you kind of suspect? Or is it, oh my God? Or are you just saying, oh my God, because of what people were saying? Which again, coming back to 
You're not being truthful. You're not being honest. I could go on, Mama. <laughs> I was gonna say, I I think this is probably a good enough good good as any place to stop. Um, uh, some things that I had on on paper, you've already addressed them. This you know dis, dismantling and dispelling stereotypes. You completely killed that as the excellent <laughs> speaker and coach that you are. Um, this has been a really good space. Um, I, I hope that everybody that watches this gains a greater understanding of, you know, how to love. And, and I, again, I didn't want to talk about letters. It's not about letters. And I, really, I, honestly, it's, it's, it's about even me loving myself enough absolutely. because a lot of times it's a projection. Yes. A lot of the reason why I said what I said earlier on that studies have shown that very, very, very staunch homophobes. I mean, we've seen it play out in many of the pastors in American churches. I don't need to give you any names. Go look them up. The Monsignor just came out, the, the Monsignor from the Catholic Church, the same one who was saying Judge, um, Joe Biden should be excommunicated, just came out last week. Really? Well, yes. So I'm not making this shit up. I can't, I don't need to. I have enough co content. I'm making it, I'm saying to you, ultimately, you need to love yourself enough to be okay for me to be who I am. Because in the, in the, in the, at the end of the day, if I wear pants or I wear skirts or I paint my hair blue, it really truly doesn't affect you. Truly. Now, as my parents, it still doesn't. However, most kids who color their hair <laughs> within two weeks, they want to change the color. <laughs> like literally, it's like, well, I don't like it anymore. Great. But if, we make, if you make this huge deal and your child says, mom, okay, I'm not gay. You're like, okay, I knew it. Which is it? Your child is saying that because they don't, again, they don't want to make a big deal out of it. They don't want to feel betrayed. They don't want to be betrayed. They want you to love them. And, and I know this guy, a Nigerian guy who said to me, and I quote, I'm never going to come out because I don't want to lose out on my inheritance. Really? You know what that means, right? When my parents die, I'll come out. Do you want your child to say that? So that's telling that your child is going to be who they are. They are literally who they are. So our last words. <laughs> what what is some mom advice? You're a momatrician. Some mom advice on learning to love the new version of your child. And is it proper to say that the new version of your child? Well, I think I think um, I think what I would say is to love your child as they are is what I prefer because they're not, not new; they were literally born that way, and that's the truth. Okay. Well, the, the not, new knowledge that you have of, of yeah, the, yeah. So I mean, ultimately, again, like everything else, as a coach, your thoughts create your result. I know this, so. Mm -hmm. You have to first start from within. And my A, B, C, D, E, the C is create a safe space in your heart first and then in your home. Mm. In your heart means you need to do the work. It's like asking a black person to teach you how to be anti-racist. Hey. <laughs> I'm already black. You are the one who needs to... So don't, and, I, and I'm glad you asked, I don't want you to rely heavily on your child. They're still trying to figure it out. And that's okay. It's okay because when I ask the parents, I say, well, when you knew that you liked boys, Michelle, I'm asking you this now. Did your parent ask you, are you sure? Did anybody say, are you sure? No, Do you need more time? I want you to see the ridiculousness of that. Are you sure? Do you need more time? Well, okay, don't say anything about it yet. Cause we want to be sure that you're sure. I want you to just hear that. But mom, I like boys. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. But you know, liking boys is like not the norm. You see what you see how that can sound. And so I want parents to just hear that. Just say, okay, how can I support you through this? How can I support you through this? Seven powerful words. I think seven, I'm not sure. <laughs> I just said seven. <laughs> I would say, oh, okay, so, wow, really, mom? 
You're like, yeah, okay. Okay, so first of all, I don't want you to tell anybody, mom. This is not that big a deal. And then you tell Tom, Dick, and Harry because you can't keep it to yourself. You think your child is going to tell you next time? I mean, parents need to just, just listen up. If your child says, I don't want a big deal, don't make a big deal. Don't paint the house rainbow. No, because a lot of people are not flamboyant. They're just who they are. My child is the most laid back, don't want to be bothered kind of kid. Don't want to be bothered for nothing. The last appearance was at Gail King. They were like, mom, this is the last time I'm going to be on any of your shows. And I'm like, <laughs> because they're really just a private person. Yeah. I just want, just want to be left alone. Everything, no, mom. Okay. So again, how can I support you through this? Seven. And your child will love you forever. Okay, mom. So I want to talk about such and such. Okay, great. Well, let's look it up or whatever. Just be that person that your child needs. I said, be the parent that your child needs you to be. Don't want your child to be the adult that you want them to be. And so that means to become the parent, you need to grow. You need to change. You need to embrace change. Nobody said it was going to be easy, but I'm doing it. And so can you. I got to go, hon. Peace tell out. everybody tell everybody how they can get in touch with you. I know you got a one o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I have a one o'clock. I have a social media, um, Facebook. I don't know what Facebook is doing these days. But I have a Facebook group. Facebook I want to put all of it in there. But... Yes, ma'am. It's called Positively Parenting Your LGBTQ Plus Child. We have about 1,200 members. We're growing every day. We're a family. And I like to say we're not perfect, but we're a family. And yes, we will show you a mirror. We will. I'm also on Instagram. I'm trying to build up my Instagram. So my Instagram <laughs> is at ask, ask Dr. C, spell it out, D-O-C-T-O-R, Lulu. Ask Dr. Lulu. I'm really excited about that because I'm really growing. Also because every day at one o'clock, I have an Instagram live like I have today. Oh, okay. Interviewing someone every single day. I said that on the 1st of June. I did that through the month of June and we're doing it again, July and also August. Interviewing and the show is called The Pride Corner. Mm -hmm. our coming out stories and more so i'm talking to queer folk i'm talking to allies and a few homophobes because why not <laughs> right so it's going to be uploaded into youtube as a youtube channel and a real podcast i'm going to upload that to itunes we're going to do that this week yeah. so that you can have them you can hear them and then also i have a tiktok that i'm really trying to get on i so haven't gotten on the tiktok train yet yeah girl you need to get on it my I'm video was i was like what so my TikTok is also Dr. Lulu, so Dr. Lulu, and um, it's at U Uchenna. U yeah. Uchenna. It was actually at Dr. Lulu before, but I forgot my password. <laughs> so I had to get a new one. That's me and text. That's you. what happens when you're 52. Yeah. We start like. I know. So girl, listen, listen. listen. When is your birthday? When is your birthday? May 20th. No way! I'm March 11. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, my darling. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. You have, you have, you have brought so much wisdom uh, to this subject. I, again, I just pray that, you know, a parent that's look, trying to figure out how to love their child again and just be a mom and a dad. And I just, I'm so happy about the space that you created and it, they can reach out to you. We'll have all the information, but thank you, Dr. Lulu. Keep doing what you're doing. Talk to you soon. And she's going to be oh, featured in his magazine. magazine. Yay. Five women you should know. We can have um, like dinner someday. We can. We absolutely can. I'll call so you. Let's make, so let's, let's connect offline because I really, I, I'm doing more of those. Everybody, I mean, of course I'm vaccinated, but if you're not, then I wear my mask. But I want people, I want to do more of that before they put us back on lockdown or something. We don't know. Yes, we so I want to try to do that more. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Take care. Bye. Bye. Hey, listen, download my free PDF. Is this still recorded? It's called 10 it's Things You recorded. Should Know About Raising Your LGBTQ Plus Child. You're going to love it. It's, yes. it, really, it really talks about most of the stuff that I talked about and then more. So okay. It's called 10 Things You Should Know About Raising Your LGBTQ Plus Child. And it's a free PDF. And it's also Tenemos en Español. So you can get oh, it in Spanish. Awesome. Now. Good job. Thank Bye. you. Have fun. Bye. I will.